A hot hitting kick, a clear melody and a full bass can be a tough challenge while mixing a beat, but it doesn't have to be that way. What's up guys, it's 5 Key Beats here, the channel to make trap and drill beats that correct on a deeper level than just some simple murder and drums. So if you want to learn how to make these type of beats and learn with me along the way, stay tuned and let's jump right into the video. In this video I'm gonna show you how I mix my drill beats from start to finish so you can follow along. After this video you'll not only know my process of mixing the beat, you will also learn some useful useful tips and tricks during the process so let's hop right into it i'm going to show you how the beat sounds like unmixed and after i'm going to mix it and then we do a compilation so as you can see here everything here is unmixed no mixing and also here there's no mixing so let's gonna start with show you what the beat sounds like unmixed Okay, this was the beat unmix. Now I'm gonna show you step by step my personal process, what I do to mix the beat. I just want to explain to you guys that mixing is very subjective. Some producers like to mix in one way, others in the other way. There's no one-on-one -on -one guide of how to mix, how every trap drill beat is mixed. Every producer has to find their own way to mix their beats. For me, this is how I'm gonna mix this drill beat here. And that said, let's go right back to the video. So first of all, I'm gonna make sure that everything is rooted to this mixer track here. As you can see, it's by default blank. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to the channel rack, select first for me the melody, press Ctrl L. Doing so, it will automatically get the same color and the same name. That's what we want. So organization is a big part of mixing, guys. After that, going through some vocals, the strings, and now we have all the melody parts. Now we're gonna add the drums. So take this hi-hat, percussion, percussion 2, I'm holding shift and command guys to select multiple ones here. So now let's take this and these two open heads here. Now we can see here everything is wood to the mixer. So now let's go ahead and I've already created these buses here guys. This will make it a lot easier for me to after organize myself. So what I like to do is I have the main drums, drums, melody, effects and vocals. Main drums is for kick, snare, clap, everything like that. And I have all the other drums like hi-hats, percussions, open hats and everything like that. That's for the noble drum bus. And we got the melody bus. All the melodies will be rooted to this bus here. We got some effects bus if needed and some vocals if someone's gonna rap on it. So first let's take all the melody, control or command, hold and then drag it over all the melody parts go to the melody right click root to this track only so now they are rooted not to the master but they are rooted to this melody which is rooted to the master so now let's take here drum bus and this same thing right click root to this track only and then we got the kick and the clap to the main bus the other way i'll leave them to the master because i want that I want it to be that this is a separate one. And then we got the effects part. I usually like to start with the kick because it's one of my main parts. So I want to focalize especially on the kick. And for my kick guys, I want that it, that it hits at minus 9 dB. I'm usually not a fan of calling out numbers because it's very subjective. It's not the same for every beat, but with the kick, I'm trying to stay very consistently with minus 9 dB because afterwards I'm gonna add the bass and my final mix should be around minus 6 dB. To achieve that, I'm gonna mix the kick at minus 9 dB. Now let's take the, let's do the same thing with the clap. From now on, it's just subjective mixing. I put the kick at minus nine and I mix every other instrument accordingly to this kick. That's what I do. Clap is fine for me. Also, I'm gonna put the kick in mono and that's just making sure that the kick is playing at both sides at the same time not in stereo where it can be separated so it's hitting right in the middle that's what we want
So what you're gonna do now is add an EQ. I'm using Pro Q3 because it's the one I usually prefer, but you can use all other EQ that you want. If you want a separate video where I only will use some stock plugins from FL Studio, just write it in the comment down below, leave a like if you want so, we can do that too. So for mixing guys, I usually see the frequencies here as energy. So we have low energy and we have high energy. So when cutting stuff, the energy is getting taken away and if we boost stuff, energy is being added. There's a small difference, but there is one. The kick now isn't as full as it was before, but it's like thin. It's maybe more punchy, but it's also more thin. That's what I don't want. I want a big fat kick, but I don't like the sound anymore. So I'm just gonna, not gonna cut anything here. Here the same thing. Just gonna check if the low frequencies need to be cut. We can see that here there are some low frequencies. Let's see if we cut them if the sound is being changed. In this case, I like the changes. So the main clap sound is around here. That's why I can, without any doubt, cut the low ends that I don't need. And this will help me afterwards. And always checking, guys, if the master channel is peaking at minus 9 dB at the moment. Now let's go on and see what we can do with the melody, guys. Now the kick is punchy and we can hear the melody still clear, so that's what I like to focus on. taking some low end down and we continue. I'm doing the same process with everything guys. Taking some reverb if needed, basic leveling and taking the low end. On every single instrument afterwards, here I want to have at least one EQ cutting the low end. Even if there isn't one, I'm gonna still do it just for safety reasons. And I don't like this vocal as dry as it is. So I'm gonna push the background. Okay, now let's just add the 808. Cut the low end if needed, below 20 Hz, and then see if it's changed the sound or not. I prefer it without, so I'm good, not gonna do anything. I'm gonna add in some saturation. So now I have to worry about all these percussions here that are making it hit higher. And I'm gonna use a compressor just to make it sound even while taking less space in the dB range, or just turn everything down and see which one is the problem. Now going with some special effects guys. First I added the decapitator, the saturation on the 808 to make it more aggressive. So now I'm gonna do the same thing with the kick. I want to use the clipper first and see what it sounds like. Bonus tip here. Just to make a little bit more space for the 808 and the kick to mix them well together. We can use a sidechain. I don't like that the whole volume of the 808 is being pushed down just because the kick is playing. Especially if you got some slides in it and the kick is playing at the same time. We couldn't even hear the slides really because it's getting pushed down all the time. 
So what I want is that I'm just gonna select some special frequencies from the kick and the 808 that's getting pushed down. So how I'm gonna do that? So selecting the kick here, right click on the 808, sidechain to this track. Now the EQ from the beginning guys. I'm selecting a frequency that I really want to boost. I'm exaggerating so I can hear it better and you can hear it better too. So don't worry, sometimes you can exaggerate stuff just to see what's even doing and you can mix accordingly. So that's the frequency that I like, I'm boosting it for around 1.71 dB. I don't want to exaggerate it, don't want to go over 2 dB. So now I'm just gonna copy this, go to my 808 and paste the same value. Making the same Q, around 3 and I remembered 1.71. So now the gain will be here 1.71 at the beginning something like that so now the way this specific frequency is getting pushed down all the time also when the slide as you could see so to make it side chain to the kick what we gotta do is get a bit little bit complicated but stay with me it's gonna make sense afterwards going here to the settings icon this settings icon processing and then because we sidechain it right click and kick so now we can see the kick here that was the red line so to sidechain it just make auto and this here and you're good to go and i will do it even more just because i like it Now let's see the difference between them two. The kick is more clear and isn't clashing as much with the 808. So that's what you really wanted. Now we can pan some stuff as you want. We can widen it. The mix is pretty much done. For the master guys, I just usually put a soft clip on it just to make the kick a little bit more punchier. And now some basic footy limiter, turn the ceiling all the way up, the saturation just a little bit down and now pushing the gain up. Checking the mix also in mono guys is very important to see if we didn't get some face issues. Okay guys so now the basically mix is done I'm just gonna listen to my stereo speakers or go to the car and then come back to it and we do the mix if needed. I inspired myself with a lot of producers like Jay Cactus, In The Mix, Ed Talenti, all internet producers and let's see each other in the next video guys. Thank you for watching. Bye. If you enjoyed the video guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and make sure to follow me on Instagram because I post all my beats there beforehand. So if you want to stay up to date and know which beats coming up into the next video, make sure to follow me there and let's see each other in the next one. Bye.